Hi, this is Anne with um, some hints about the week 11 code. Uh, the week 11 starting code is fairly long. It's about 300 and, guess 350 lines long, which is a step up um, from what you've had before. It, um, it's that long because Mark and I conferred and we decided it would be simpler for you to have array and vector code in one project where you could do comparing and contrasting, but it does mean that there's a lot of code um, in a single main.cpp. So I thought that I would give you some tips about how to read and find and think about this code and a couple of things that the IDE, the Replit editor, can do for you to make your work easier. Okay, so I think I say this in the slides that Really, when you first open this file, um, besides, I suppose, coming over here and um, running the solution, never hurts to know that that's working and that you can see what your target functionality is. So gravity.bin shows you what your code should be doing. Okay, If I hit the Run button in the console, um, I'm missing the prompt, but I happen to know that that you know this is for weight, and that's for jump height. And I'm seeing much of the same functionality. Let me bring those two. Um, so one of the things I wanted to point out is you can drag these tabs from one pane to another. And so over here on the left, we're seeing the solution output, and over here on the right, we're seeing the starting code output. And you'll see that they, they have the same of the labels, but the actual output clearly needs a lot of work. So I'm going to move this guy back over here. OK, um, I actually recommend reading the code before you run it, but I don't think most people do that. So um, let's be realistic. OK, so whenever you have a code, have code with these many functions in one file, it presents a real problem about how to organize it. Um, in the old days, what teams often did was organize functions by alphabet, alphabetically, um, so that you know if you had a function that was named generate, you could guess where it might be in the file. Okay. We no longer have to do that because we can actually use the ID to jump to function definitions, which I'll show you in a minute. But what I did this time is I organized the function prototypes one way and the code a different way, trying to um, be as useful to you as I could be. Okay. So for example, um, there's a set of functions that use arrays as arguments. And they generally have, um, except for this print weight and height and table, which was getting to have too long a file name, a function name anyway, they generally have the word array in their function name. And basically, you can see that for arrays and for functions, you've got a set of one driver to process the whole thing, a set of a pair of overloaded functions, they have the same name, but they take different arguments. They have different parameters. One handles strings, the other handles doubles, arrays of doubles. Um, just as down here in the vector area, you can see that you have an overloaded pair of functions, one of which works with a vector of strings and the other a vector of doubles. Okay, so I took up here in the prototype area, the functions and organize them by their data type, I guess is what you'd say, with this one little array or vector set of vector and agnostic set of calls down here, um, the input ones, printing table headings and printing table row. They don't actually care whether you're working with arrays or vectors. Both sets of code use these functions. Here in main, we have um, 
we basically are getting the user's input once and then going and processing that input twice, once with arrays and once with vectors. And what I wanted to show you is um, this is a this is a functionality of most modern integrated development I editor environments, IDEs, okay, or what we think in this case as our editor, is that if I click on that and I right click on it, uh, let me right click on it right. That interesting. This has been working for me partially is I should be able to get to the implementation of that from the IDE. I can always, if I want to go to that function, I can use my control F key. And I'll see that it is, it appears four times in the code and I can go down and look for each of them and basically get right to the implementation. Um, so again, I can use my control F find feature to find specific functions in the code when I need it. Um, what you'll see is that sometimes you have a pair of functions like these two that get user input that even on a relatively small screen should fit pretty much on the same screen, and you can read them one above the other and sort of compare and contrast what they're doing. This one uses a while loop. This one uses a do loop, OK? But for some of the longer functions, what you'll see is that they pretty much fill up a screen full. Um, and so there's a trick you can do that if I go to, if I click over here in this pane, and then I come over here and I open main.cp in tab, what you can see is that you can get these two pieces of code up side by side. And um, I can also close this pane. So since the only source code we're working with is main.cpp, I don't actually need my files sidebar. And at this point, if, for example, I wanted to look at the function process gravity arrays and compare and contrast it to process gravity vectors, I can actually have those two up side by side. And I think when you get down to the um, print arrays and vectors or the generate code, like here, where we're generating the planet weight array. If I come over here and I look for generate planet weight vector, I can bring those up side by side. And I can see that, for example, both of them are not doing a calculation right now. But this one is using a traditional for loop because you can't use the for, for range um, language construct on an array passed into a function. But you can use that simpler for loop on a vector passed into a function. Uh, the only other thing is um, that you should know, I, I would hope you'd know. Um, let me see if I can refresh this page and see if I'll get my button back. OK, um, you should usually see a little button right here 
that looks kind of like a page. It's like a little tiny icon of a page. If you have that button, it'll it'll format your code, um, indent it automatically. And that's a really handy thing to do um, as you code, just neaten up your code before you turn it in or while you're trying to work with it. It's a lot easier to read loops and if statements um, when they're formatted well. But I think that's all I have for now. I hope this helps.